Conan the Barbarian is the Arnold Schwarzenegger mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world what is best in life. Silly hats. <laughs> It starts off with this crazy old man. No one can you trust. Rambling complete nonsense. Not women. Rambling mostly nonsense. This you can trust. To this terrified child. And they took from him the enigma of steel. Who's way more concerned about those fucking clouds. Anyways, now he can get back to ice fishing poorly when he's interrupted by these awesome gentlemen who have armored attack dogs. A jacked Yosemite Sam. And their war flag is Guy Fieri with a double snake mustache. Now these motherfuckers know how to party. Sure, they kill his dad and the rest of the village. But still, Everything about them is so badass until they take their helmets off. Now it's between the Renaissance Fair rejects and this lady who's had some face work and apparently added a third arm, which is way above their pay grade. So they call their boss as is standard protocol for dealing with shoddy editing. Turns out he's also in an 80s hairband, which she just can't take seriously. So she lets her guard down before being taken out by pure sass. But there's good news for him. They have an exciting job opportunity in the highly competitive and fulfilling wheel pushing industry. And business is booming. But 20 years later, the world's changing. It no longer has a place for a man to push a giant wheel in circles all day, which they call progress, but at what cost? Now, a broken old man who the world's passed by, he has no choice but to take odd jobs here and there, like pit fighting, wood chopping, and cod piece modeling, but mostly pit fighting, which makes him a legend in the biker community. So now he's on top of the world doing He-Man sh** with Scott Eastwood, who doesn't know how cups work and pays the price. In his spare time, he Nicholas cages it as a treasure hunter, but does it the Arnold way by smashing the sh** out of everything. He is so beloved, he can't even go for a giant mushroom walk without being hassled by rabid fans. There's warmth and fire. Thanks, crazy lady, for that important science lesson. Please fuck off now. Do you not wish to warm yourself by my fire? Funny you mentioned it. He just learned an interesting fact about fire that he's been dying to test out. And you know what? There is warmth in there. He's sorry for thinking you were weird. Since she obviously knows her shit, he asks her for some help. What is it you seek? A standard, a symbol, two snakes facing each other. Oh, you must mean this thing. Yes. That's the cult of Flavortown. Nobody fucks with Flavortown. She wants no part of that, so she does the very normal thing of turning into fire and flying away warmly. Now that he's educated on fire warmness, he runs into this guy who has one of the shittiest jobs ever. What are you doing here? In it for war. Well, good luck with that. Who are you? I am Subutai, thief and archer. Just a tip, you should probably leave the thief part out. Then, after he brags about being a perverted liar with terrible body odor and two or three STDs, they become besties. <laughs> now they're forest gumping it across the countryside, doing touristy things, and then back to the frolicking 
maybe punch a bitch camel or two, but mostly the frolicking. Until they come across a shrine dedicated to the greatest American hero and come to pay their respects to television greatness when they're suddenly attacked. But it was just a hilarious mix up. You're not a god. She can't believe it herself. Believe it or not, it's just her. Neither are you. Thieves. Oh my god, stop telling people that. Arnold asks if she'd like to climb on top of a big snake. <laughs> and off they go. What's at the top is greater than they ever could have imagined. A shitty smelling hole. It smells so bad. Do you want to live forever? That's a weird non sequitur, but yeah, that would be great. Wow, this place is bigger than they thought. So to save time, they agree that she'll stand here holding a candle while they go below and fight a giant mutant snake. <laughs> then they're enjoying some good old fashioned topless trust falls. Don't worry, Skittles the emotional support snake won't let anything happen to you because you matter. And oh my god, Skittles, their friendly mascot, was brutally murdered. What kind of sick son of a bitch would do that? <laughs> oh my god, lady, get over yourself. We have a real problem. But she thinks quick and comes up with the genius plan of selling them out immediately. Not women. But luckily for them, Not women. goes both ways, and she quadruple agents that shit when she stabs him in his prehistoric bubble jacket. <sighs> then they start to worry about her mental state when she begins having repetitive questioning. You wanna live forever? Still yes, and judging by her trajectory, there's no way she made that fucking pool. Later, she won up Derek Smalls here thieves. as the sneakiest thief around. Holy shit, how did he see that? But that level of hypervigilance is more of a curse than a blessing. And for the love of God, he just started his oatmeal nap. Could you fuckers come back later? And how the f does that help? Now he has to see the king with his pores looking less than radiant. Why, Rexar himself has threatened me, the king. Wow, that's crazy. But they have no idea who the f that is. And even if they did, none of it sounds like their fucking problem. Comes a time when the jewels cease to sparkle. The gold loses its. Look, old man, we have places to be. Just get to the fucking point. And this one was thrust into a father's heart. You have three seconds. My daughter travels east. Kill your daughter. Got it. Steal my daughter back. Yeah, whatever. Same shit. And no time to explain, but here's Jello. Take all you can carry. Go, 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 go. Now Arnold's hot on her tail and closing in fast when he realizes he has no idea what she looks like or even her fucking name, but he does know she's going east, so I'm sure it'll all work out. There are some close calls, like when he runs into the very terrifying Children of Doom. And holy shit, he's lucky he made it out alive. Doom's children. But his fear turns to joy when he finds out that not only does someone else like staging battle scenes with dead bodies, but he's a fashion bro too and is dressed like a giant chicken. <laughs> Arnold likes his style and he likes his sequin outfit. <laughs> this day got a whole lot better. <laughs> Which inspires Arnold to take things in a brave new direction. Flowers grow around here. <laughs> flowers. F yeah, flowers. This is the new Arnold, and he's never been so giddy. What are the flowers for? A girl. Now this is the Conan the Barbarian for a new generation, and it's way overdue. He has insecurities. I'm afraid. 
just like you. To bear yourself? Why? You're so big and so well grown. Okay, so not like you. You should be proud of your body. I guess like me. Could we talk over there? Where the others do not see? Never mind. You, but in a shocking twist, the seven-time Mr. Olympia isn't actually shy about his body. This is, uh, your rope? I'm pretty sure it's his. Priest's rope? Turns out that and these stupid questions were all just a very unnecessary and convoluted ruse so he could assault a priest. <laughs> then he goes full Mr. Ripley. What do you see? Uh, infinity. And is fucking nailing it. Oh my god, Arnold doesn't stick out at all. How could they know? Oh, son of a bitch, it's the sassy guy. You broke into my house. No, he didn't. Stole my property. Maybe. Murdered my servants. That never happened. And my pets. Okay, but he kept taking everyone's baseballs, so he had it coming. So they go for symbolism and knock it out of the park with a reference to the most important story ever told. The Van Damme movie Cyborg. But Arnold doesn't quite have what it takes to spin kick himself free. He even gets confused and mixes up he and the vulture's roles. Luckily, his thieving lying friend, who doesn't return his shopping cart, happens to come across him on one of his cross-country jogs. <laughs> Then, while he's sleeping, they write lyrics to Creed songs all over his body so they can tell him he got them tattooed while drunk as a funny little goof. <laughs> the next day, she's being super dramatic about the whole thing. But Arnold ain't got no time for mourning. He ain't got no time. Because he's pissed. And he's gonna be dead by Sunday morning, hanging by his head. So now, they're getting ready to wreck Mr. Myrtle's shit. Once and for all. Which is a shame, because he found a way to make cannibalism fun by having them serve the food like Ghana pallbearers. And if that's not bad enough, we find out everything really is run by lizard people, and now you owe your uncle an apology. But we'll get to that later, because Arnold's not quite right and is focusing his attacks on candles and the fucking air. <laughs> Which is when Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty show up, and oh my god, not again! No time for that either, because now they're leaving without killing him, which was the whole reason they went there. I guess they did snatch that one guy's daughter. My own daughter. Even though they all talked about how they don't give a shit about that. I have talked to Subutai and he agrees. But also no time for that, because now it's a cartoon and he shoots a fucking snake. <laughs> so she's dead, but it's really hard to take it seriously. Now he's trying to decide what to do, but that fire show ate up most of the budget. So fuck it, they'll just come at him one at a time. Like it's batting practice. Then holy shit, the spike plug starts spitting. They eventually run out of bodies and he only brought one snake. So I guess they win. Which is great, but it's getting late and we really gotta wrap this shit up. So he does what he should have done in the first place, just up here behind him. Then we get a last second bombshell. Who now is your father, my son? Save it for Star Wars, you fucking nerd. 